Welcome to Tech Savvy. I'm Lee Newman. I'm the Executive Director of the Campus Operations for the Little Grange Campus of West Georgia Tech. In late October, we had a great visitor on our campus, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle. He came to discuss and congratulate everyone on the efforts toward starting up this Think Academy, the College and Career Academy, that will be housed on the West Georgia Tech campus. Dr. Alford began the program by welcoming everyone to the campus. And we look forward to the day, and it won't be too far off, Lieutenant Governor, when school buses start pulling up right here at that front door, and those high school kids start coming off those buses inside of this building. And I think that makes us unique in the entire state. I don't think there's a Charter Academy where the Charter Academy is literally inside of the Technical College. Dr. Alford then welcomed Kathy Carlisle, the CEO of the Think Academy, to the podium. Dr. Carlisle spent a little time giving an update on the program and on the, um, the plans for the Academy and spent a lot of time thanking everybody that had anything to do with the program. Just to let you know that our primary focus is to prepare students for the workforce in college in an innovative learning environment. And that's what we will have here at West Georgia Tech. Right now, you are sitting in our future mechatronics, energy, and STEM lab. Uh, we are just elated to think about how this is going to serve our students in preparing them for our manufacturing jobs in uh, Troop County. <clears throat> our pathways for the College and Career Academy is mechatronics, energy, STEM, business, marketing, and health. Upstairs, we have 30,000 square feet allotted to us for business, marketing, and health. Last week, we had the honor of meeting with our healthcare professional investment team. And they are helping us as employers to develop our curriculum, our equipment, our focus, and, and to help us reach out into the community to bring more people, more employers to sponsor our young people. Because that is the core of what we will do. We'll have 500 students to start next August. And our goal is for each student to have an employer par partner aligned with their career pathway to encourage them, to build them, to mentor them, to make them the best that they can be, and to get help their dreams to come true. We are grateful today for the support of, of the Grange to West Georgia Technical College. They have sacrificed, they have greeted us, they have opened their arms to us, and we thank you, Karen and Steve Daniel and faculty and staff for that. We also thank our school partners because the College and Career Academy is very different. It's a very different animal, and they've had to embrace this new creature, and they have done it with grace, and they have been very supportive of us, so we thank you so much, school system. We thank our employers and our employer sponsors, our community, and all of the folks that are so dedicated to making this happen. Helen Rice was, when she went up to speak, her first comment was about her first experience after she had been selected to be the chairman of the school board of the state of Georgia. I want you to know it's a pleasure for me to be here today, and I have to share this with you. One of my first jobs are, are or one of the first pleasures I had as chairing the state school board was to sign the contract for the Think Academy. I walked in the boardroom that morning and I had a stack of papers to sign and on the very top was our contract with the Troop County School System and the State Board of Education for the Think Academy. I can tell you that that actually gave me chills because I wasn't expecting that and I need what a great opportunity we were going to have here in Troop County. Following Mrs. Rice's comments, Kathy Carlisle comes to the podium and introduces a industry partner, Jason Ransbottom, who is the manager of human resources and administration for PowerTech America. My name is Jason. I'm with PowerTech America out there. We're part of the Hyundai uh, group of companies out there on site with Kia. And we have some other folks in-house here too that are, are out there. Uh, we supply the transmissions to both Hyundai and Kia. 
Um, the, uh, we've been here since uh, actually producing transmission since 2010. Uh, I've worked with programs like this in the past in other areas I've come from and uh, they're very, very good uh, for automotive. As you said earlier, they're creating a tremendous amount of opportunity for folks like us, the employers, and what they're doing is they're bridging uh, a gap and sometimes they, uh, we see that gap in this area quite a bit where there's a gap between the, the employee coming in, especially the young employee, and the jobs that are out there available. Uh, we have a lot of uh, companies in this area that are very highly automated. Uh, I run 42 automated CNC's. Nowadays, uh, you don't really even have to have somebody to sit down and program this or do the CNC work uh, like we used to have them do uh, years ago. Now we can program all of that stuff and, and just let the machines run on their own. So we need people to program those. We need electricians. We need people who can uh, troubleshoot. We need some very foundational uh, skills within uh, technical skills that the college looks like it's going to be uh, uh, working on, on teaching uh, for the area. There's a lot of people in this area and in this community that have roots in this community. It's one of the things that struck me when I came in here is how many people are here that have stayed here as well. Uh, so I'm sure there's a lot of folks in the area that would like to uh, get a jet, go through uh, uh, Think Academy and, and get a job at one of these companies out there where they can have a really good, strong future. Uh, we have additional things. I mean, the, uh, the, it's almost unlimited the type of technical skill that we have out there. The other thing I think the, the college is doing right is getting kids in high school building soft skills as well. So the soft skills, uh, they can learn those in the classroom and prepare folks with this kind of an automotive tier one, automotive OEM supplier. So there's a lot of good things that they're doing. I think that they need a lot of uh, community, state, and local help uh, to get this done. I think we need to spread the word for it as well. Uh, I would be absolutely thrilled to hire several people uh, coming out of this program because, again, that changes the learning curve for us and uh, we can get uh, more efficient more quickly uh, with all of our dollars. So my statement's very short, not a whole lot of intellectualism in there, but uh, it is a great program and I think it's something that will, uh, places where I've seen this put in, into use in the past, uh, it's had a very strong reaction within the automotive and the manufacturing community. Thank you. Following Mr. Ransbottom's comments from the industry perspective, Dr. Carlisle introduced Randy Nix, who is the um, state representative for the Troop County area, and he was, a, he was able to welcome and introduce the speaker, Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle, as his friend. Thank you. I will tell you that I found out just before I sat down that I was going to get to introduce the Lieutenant Governor. So this will not be any way canned or written or anything. So rather than introduce the Lieutenant Governor, I'd like to introduce my friend Casey Cagle, if I may. I believe that the first time I met Casey Cagle was a little over eight years ago. Uh, he came to LaGrange, it was the first time I'd ever run for office and the Republican women were having a meeting at the event center downtown back when they used to meet there. And you know, running for state representative, not having been involved too much in politics, this guy came in, Casey Cagle, he's running for lieutenant governor. And I'm thinking, whoa, running for lieutenant governor. The thing that impressed me the most about Casey was there was no pretense to it. He was, his feet were firmly on the ground. When he gave his speech, he didn't speak in huge platitudes, but he talked about the development in his life and how he got to the point where he was and he wanted to give back, he wanted to serve other people. And that made an impression on me and I have never forgotten that and I, I really, really appreciate his approach. I know that he and I share a passion for college and career academies and college and career pathways. He was very supportive of me when I had the legislation uh, to create our college and career pathways and also the soft skills that were mentioned, some, uh, some emphasis on that. Uh, and he was very supportive of my legislation on that. So let me just stop there and introduce my friend and ask you to, if you will, give a very warm welcome to our Lieutenant Governor, Casey Kane. Lieutenant Governor Casey Cagle came to the podium and he gave a brilliant speech about the process of Think Academy, the involvements. It even goes in, he even describes it as a seed planted to one day have a brighter future. And he uses an example by Zell Miller with the port of Savannah. I remember back when Zell Miller was governor of the state, he said, I've got this little port down in Savannah. 
This little port in Savannah is a sleepy little port. It's not really doing a whole lot, but I want to turn it in to an economic engine for this entire state. And he said, my vision is very simple. My vision is a vision about going out and recruiting the large big box retailers to locate in the Savannah region. They're the ones that are importing all the goods. If I can get them to locate in the Savannah region, then those ships will have no other place to come but to our port. Today it is the fastest growing port in the nation. Tributes $60 billion in annual revenue in that port. Huge success story. A little seed that was planted, that was nurtured and watered. And today, you and I have the opportunity to see the harvest and reap the harvest of that little seed. You guys came together as a community. You wanted to plant a seed. A seed that would give this community a wonderful harvest where people could find purpose for today but also hope for tomorrow. It's a powerful thing when you stop and analyze it. You see, what we have in our state today is a real skills gap. You go across the state and you will find employers that will tell you, yes, I have jobs, but I don't have the skilled workers to fill that job. Part of that is because, quite honestly, in education, we have adopted this one-size-fits-all model. We've said every kid needs to be on this one path. What we now realize, looking back, is that not every kid needs to be on the same path. What we need to do is we need to find, early on, things that motivate and challenge kids and get them on the path that they choose, giving them the skills that are necessary to not only be competitive in the workforce, but fulfill their dreams. It's the ability to find the purpose for today and hope for tomorrow. Lieutenant Governor Cagle gave a really good example of a success story with the Think, Think Academies or the College and Career Academies in Athens. And the story in, involves a student that goes to Athens Tech, gets an associate degree in criminal justice, and then is ready to go on into her second or third year at the university system. It really is illustrated best when I sat down and talked with a young girl in Athens, Georgia, a couple of weeks ago. I sat there and I talked with this young lady. She's a African-American, very, very bright, full of enthusiasm, but she told me that not only does she work a part-time job at Burger King, but that she is going to finish high school this year, and she is also enrolled in the College and Career Academy, and that she will graduate from high school, but she will also graduate with an associate's degree in criminal justice. She has already been accepted to the University of Georgia, which she plans to finish her degree there and then go on to be a lawyer. Now, I told her we had enough lawyers, okay? <laughs> what makes the story so special is that she gets it. And that system gets it. Because what we're allowing her to do is explore pathways. Find out those areas on the front end, what it is that really motivates you and where you see how you can make a difference in this world. She found that. And then because of our commitment and because of our focus, we allow her to have those tools to get an associate's degree in criminal justice. Now that's exciting in itself, but what's even more exciting is that she got that two-year degree debt-free. It didn't cost her a dime. 
Think about that for a moment. Think about the ability to accelerate a student's opportunity. Think about the financial impact that it's going to have. I don't know what her background was. I didn't ask her. It didn't matter to me. But I do know this. Two years of college debt free is going to make a big difference in anybody's life. And the phenomenal part is that this is not a person who is going to go through the motions, who is going to go through and get a bachelor's of arts degree and look back and determine, what am I going to do with this? That is significant. She knows what she's going to do. And nothing is going to stand in her way. What our focus with our college and career academies are about is to where every person, every single person in this community can come to this facility and find a career pathway. They can leave here with an industry certified certificate or they can leave here with an associate's degree. But they're going to leave here focused and they're going to leave here changed. The other thing that is unique is this is not a place that is mandatory. Now, K through 12 education is mandatory. It is a place where we educate the masses, regardless of your background, regardless of, 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 of where you are. But this is a place that you get to choose. When you get to choose to be somewhere, it is not a privilege, or, or I'm sorry, it's not a right, it is a privilege. That in itself takes on a whole new meaning. Because when you want to change a generation and give them these opportunities, but you also have the employers and the apprenticeships and people that are coming into this facility, and they look at a person and they say, if you did what you just did on the job, I would fire you. That changes people. It makes them realize that it truly is a privilege to be here and I need to rise to the occasion. And excellence is our standard every single day. And what is going to happen as a result of this college and career academy is not only are lives going to be changed, not only are people going to have an income that is far superior than what we might imagine, but it's going to be an economic engine for this entire community. Every major corporation that I have sat down with has said, let's talk about incentives. Let's talk about those incentives. But quickly they turn away from incentives to talk about the most important issue on their mind. How do you ensure that I have the quality workforce to compete and be successful? I believe that if our focus is on workforce development, if our focus is giving kids this opportunity to be trained and skilled and competitive, we will have given them something that they can take anywhere in the world. But more importantly, most of them want to stay here. And when industries want to grow and expand and new industries want to locate, you have something specifically to sell as a result of that. It's a powerful, powerful tool. But it will only succeed if everyone is committed to its success where the business community, educators, and parents are saying, this is our chance to plant a seed that will change the face of the economy and the future of individual lives. It's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And it excites me when public education now is rising to the occasion and rising with innovative ideas to say, we can. We can. And I'm telling you, I'm confident that we can. And I'm confident that we can change lives 
and that we can build a strong economy as we go forward. And so I'm really here to encourage you and to tell you that I'm proud of where you are, but more importantly, I am excited about where you're going. And the future is right there for our taking. And so together, we will accomplish wonderful things. We also have to make it acceptable, acceptable to be in these kinds of fields. And what do I mean by that? I had a person call me up an Atlanta paper and interviewed me. And the lady that was interviewing me about College and Career Academy, she said, you know, my oldest daughter, she was in AP class, she did so great in school, she excelled and she received a scholarship to an Ivy League college. And she was so proud of her, and I would be too. But then, what she said that was very telling is she said, but now my son, he struggled through school. He barely could get through. He ended up having to go to a trade school, into a trade. And I immediately picked up on the fact that it was a proposition of value to where she put a greater value here than she did here. And I asked her a question. It's not often that I get to ask a interviewer a question, but I did. I said, let me ask you just, let me just pose this question to you. I said, if you are sick today and you need to go see the doctor, you get an appointment, you go, and the doctor makes you feel better, that doctor is a great value to you, right? Oh, absolutely. I said, but that next day, you're feeling better, you go to work, you get through the work, you come home, and you open your door to walk into your house, and you realize that a pipe has burst, and it is ruining all your floor, your furniture, and making a wreck of your home. I said, my question to you is, that plumber that you call today, just as valuable as that doctor you called upon yesterday. A job, regardless of what it is, has value. And as a society, we have to get to a place to where it is acceptable, regardless of where you are, regardless of the job that you're doing. That is where the American dream is really found. It's found in having a job and, and working hard and making a difference for yourself and for your family. That's the beauty of what we're doing with these college and career academies here in Georgia. And today we have 29, but by 2020 I have a goal to have every kid, every student access to a college and career academy because that's what's gonna to to change not only the face of this community, but the entire face of our state. So you're gonna help us make Georgia an even better place. And together, I look forward to what comes. Thank you so much. Following Lieutenant Governor's um, remarks, Kathy Carlisle thanked the governor and, and the Lieutenant Governor and everyone at the meeting. And then he and she introduced um, Paige Estes, the president of the Chamber of Commerce, for the closing remarks. Well, it's certainly an honor to be here. And as Kathy mentioned, I had the distinct pleasure of simply being a coach of a really big team. Um, and thanks to Ricky Wolf and the Center for Strategic Planning for having the vision to help us move forward with our efforts to start a college and career academy. And I had a big team, Lieutenant Governor, had 108 people, uh, including Helen and Randy and several other folks who joined us in this effort. But I also want to let the community know that we have actually followed the career of the Lieutenant Governor because in 2006, when you were uh, running for office, we had Renee Willis, who's in the back of the room, um, begin to work with our school system because we realize that business is the key aspect into helping us educate the workforce of the future and really transforming our community. And through our Excellence in Education program, we were able to move forward with this project a little differently than I think most other communities have done. It's only been 18 months since we held that first town hall meeting. Can you believe what happened since February of last year? By August, we were submitting a charter school application that had just been approved by Sheila Rowe and the local school board. 
And then by December, we were submitting a pretty big grant application to you and to your office, Lieutenant Governor, and look where we've come since then. Um, I feel like we gave birth to a project and then we turned it over to an amazing group of people. Certainly the leadership of Kathy Carlisle, but John Aspell and so many of the team members of your board that are here to take it and move forward and think what you've done just since January of this year. I believe strongly that the way that we're going to keep people in this community to realize that it is a special place that I moved to many years ago is because we're going to be the place where people want to raise a family, where they want to be young entrepreneurs, where they see the future happening in careers that perhaps they had never envisioned because they maybe not, do not have the opportunity to see what lies ahead in their current situation. But by taking our College and Career Academy, not just from the walls here at West Georgia Tech, but beginning in our elementary schools, we will transform this community. And again, it's through your leadership, Lieutenant Governor, for creating the College and Career Academy movement in Georgia, and I'm just so honored that we have a part of that. So get involved, get engaged. If you have students, get them enrolled. And we certainly want to thank our partners at West Georgia Tech, Dr. Alford, for your team and everything that you all continue to do to support the effort. So again, thank you, and congratulations, Kathy. You're doing a great job. This was a very exciting event for West Georgia Tech, for the College and Career Academy, and for the community. And West Georgia Tech is very excited about being a major partner in this process. We are excited because we are able to work with the Think Academy to offer our dual enrollment programs. And like for next fall, for the rising juniors and seniors, we will be able to offer to them opportunities not only in the CNA class or our welding classes, but we'll also have opportunities for them to take shampoo tech and then we'll have an, elect, uh, an industrial electrician program available for the, the students and we'll, be able, we'll have our Excel classes, which are such a great opportunity for the students to be able to get college credit while they're still in high school. As long as they meet the minimum requirements and they're excelling and on time to graduate, they can come to West Georgia Tech and take their English 101 as it used to be called, or their math, or their history, humanities, Spanish, all of the basic core classes for college, they can be taking them in high school and get a major step ahead in their college endeavors. They can graduate in our programs, like for an example welding, and pretty much go into a new job. I think Caterpillar is just working with us to make sure that they have an opportunity to talk to any of our graduates, especially in the dual enrollment area. So it is very exciting to be a part of this, it, this wonderful event for Troop County and for LaGrange and the students in our, in our school system to be able to have this additional opportunity to really take a test drive college is the way we're looking at it. We're, we're sending out postcards to all the high school junior and seniors parents to let them know that now's a chance to find out what your student can achieve in high school and really get a big jump start on the college and career in their next in their future. So I'm Lee Newman. I'm with West Georgia Tech. I'm an executive director of the campus operations. We're excited about being a part of all this and all the things that we're doing on campus. So please come see us or visit us on our website at www.westwestgatech.edu.